Hi, everybody, and welcome to our webcast. We are excited to share with you today some of the resources available to our Tarleton students as they pursue their educational goals. We are also excited to answer your questions, so please feel free to use the interact button in the lower right-hand corner of your screen to submit those questions, and hopefully we can answer them at the end of the presentation. So our fair participants today come from a variety of offices. First, we have Career Services. You will also hear from University Libraries, the Writing Center, the Office of the Registrar, the University Bookstore, Academic Technology, Disability Resources, and our Student Counseling Center. So at this time, I will just turn things over to Career Services. Hi, good afternoon. I guess it is since it's 12.01. I can formally say that. My name is Alana Hefner and I'm the Director of Career Services. And there's a lot going on with this screen, uh, but I want you to focus on what we call the career cycle. And these are just different uh, services and resources that are broken down into phases in which we intercept students. So many of the phases overlap or make a gradual fade into one another. So you may notice some repeating resources or services. All right. So the first phase that I want to review with you is self-exploration phase. So we have career assessments. We have trained staff to talk to you through the results of, say, an interest inventory, personality assessment, and work values, and much more, and then how they interconnect with the different careers and why you might be drawn to one career over another. We have other online resources for browsing, including national databases for job descriptions, salaries, and uh, job outlooks. So in other words, is this position going to be growing or is it going to be decreasing? And then finally, we have additional resources available to help you understand how careers are linked to different majors and different progressions through multiple degrees. Another phase that we intercept students is during the career investigation phase. This is where students are trying to take a deeper dive into the different careers and occupations. Um, this is more characterized by trying to narrow your focus. So you may know that you want to go into a certain major and you know you kind of want to go into these fields, but you're not quite sure which ones. And so career investigation, we have resources and services that can kind of help you narrow that to get maybe get a clearer grasp of the different marketable skills that you're going to need to do this occupation as opposed to this occupation and how that may connect to a variety of different degrees. Um, another phase that we have is the one most familiar to students is the develop and communicate your brand. Promoting yourself through branding opportunities such as social media, you know, Insta, Face Snap, and LinkedIn. We do a lot with LinkedIn and we do some things with Insta, Face Snap, but uh, for the most part, uh, LinkedIn is a, is a treasure chest and a treasure trove of different abilities and ways for you to connect. And it's a it's a professional platform, if you're not familiar with it, on how you can get your name out there and start networking with those in the field and fields you want to get into. Building solid resumes, navigating the interview, specifically situational interview questions, behavioral interview questions, and overall professional development, such as effective networking skills and the art of applying for jobs. And yes, there is a right and a wrong way to apply for jobs. Finally, the next destination planning. And this is basically where you take all the things and you tailor the solid resume into or uh, for a specific position. Um, you're targeting specific employers and specific positions, perhaps attending networking events with a purpose and a plan, not just a shotgun approach, if you will. Uh, it's the art of following up with a recruiter. How do you do that? What is the etiquette? Salary negotiation resources and how to keep all of those things straight. 
Finally, you might want to take a screenshot of this because these are all the different platforms in which you can connect with us. We do have the, the Insta Snap Face or whatever that, that conglomeration is. We also have LinkedIn. We have YouTube channels. We can also be found on the various different campuses. Um, please check our website. It is deep and wide and everything that I've just spoken about and barely touched on is on our website. So please reach out to us. We would love to hear from you and welcome. Thank you so much, Alana. And now we will hear from University Libraries. Hello, everyone. My name is Adam Keim. I'm the manager of graduate and faculty resources. And basically what that means is I lead the team that um, exists to serve you and to help you become a better researcher and a, and a successful student as you pursue your graduate degree. Uh, the first slide here is just an example of some of the programming and services we offer. If you're taking a biology class, for example, your professor will tell you everything you need to know about biology or your specific subject. But there will be a lot of things that pop up that you will need to do academically that you might not have much experience with. And if you don't, there is nothing wrong with that. Um, so we are here to equip you with the tools necessary to succeed academically. One thing, for example, we do throughout the semesters is the research success series. And we call it that because it's just, you know, every so often, every other week or so, we might offer a Zoom session that covers topics that, like I said, might pop up that might surprise you that you have to know what to do in your graduate degree that you've never done before. Something like write a literature review or find peer review articles, whatever it is. Um, as a graduate student, especially if you're a new one, you might not even know the ways that you need help. And that's okay. You'll discover that as you go throughout your degree. The library is here um, to serve you in, in whatever way you need. Here's an example on our website. There are a lot of tools for you that you can learn at your own pace. You can reach out to us for help or you can kind of figure things out on your own. Everybody's a bit different. Uh, but we have curated, custom-made guides for you depending on what your degree is. We have databases that cover every topic here that is taught at Tarleton. We have what we call LibGuides, which are guides created specifically for your topic, which is kind of a, a one go-to place to go um, to, to find the best databases for your subjects, articles, books, things like that. We also have on our website several, you know, quick videos that you can watch um, if these, you know, topics pop up, like writing a literature review, for example, comes up, you have to do something that you don't know how to do. We have a lot of guides on our website. We have a YouTube channel that walks you through these things, uh, just in a brief overview way. So you can kind of learn on your own at your own pace. And we know that many, especially graduate students, might not be here on campus. Um, you know, you are a distance student, for example, and we, we want you to be able to access everything an on-campus student can. So if it's a service or something that the library has, we want you to have just as much access to it as anybody else. So there are things like interlibrary loan, we can mail things, we do a lot online. Uh, we want your experience to be as deep and rich as anybody else's. And lastly, I will encourage you to never hesitate to reach out for help. There is no shame in that whatsoever. Like I said before, as a graduate student, you might not even know the things that you need help with and, and stuff will pop up that may surprise you. You can reach out to us and we can personalize help to you. One of the great things about being a graduate student at Tarleton is we want to tailor our services to you. Whatever it is you need, we'll do it. <laughs> we'll help you in whatever way, because there might be ways that we haven't even anticipated. On our website, you can reach out to us and schedule an appointment for as long as you need it to be covering whatever you need. It can be online or in person, and you can just visit our website to schedule uh, consultations with librarians. And there's our website, tarleton.edu slash library. Um, again, don't hesitate to reach out. We are here for you. Thank you so much, Adam. Next, we will hear from the Writing Center. 
Good afternoon. So my name is Haley. I'm one of the tutors at the Writing Center. And the Writing Center is a free support students for students by students. So if you're going through an assignment and you find yourself trying to come up with a topic or struggling with sources, organizing your paper, or fighting with Microsoft Word to format those dissertation chapters, you can come to the Writing Center and we are here to help you. So on the left are some kind of common problems that students might run into, and the list on the right is the language that our tutors are going to use when talking about that, and those are some of the things you're going to see when you're making an appointment and we're asking you what you need help with. So our tutors work with students through all stages of the writing process. If you haven't gotten started yet, if you just need us to proofread or anywhere in between, we're here to help you. We can help with all university documents. So if it's a discussion board or a paper, even um, what you might consider more personal documents like a scholarship application or resume, we can help you with all of that. And we can also help within all disciplines. Our tutors come from a wide background of subject areas. They are students themselves. Some are graduate students themselves. Some are undergraduate, but we don't have solely English majors here. We have excellent writers who have experience in other disciplines as well. So as you can see here, one of the major misconceptions about the Writing Center is we only help with English papers. But in spring 22, only 11% of the courses that we helped with were English courses, and the rest were for other subjects. So there's a bit of a breakdown of the different colleges that we helped here. But as you can see, there is a lot of variation, and we are more than able to help you with whatever assignment you're working on. We can just help you improve your written communication. So when it comes to visit type, you can see right here, most of our submissions were over email which is a great option for remote students, but we also have quite a bit of students who come see us in person or over Zoom. So breaking down these appointment types a little bit more, we have a couple of virtual options. These are great for remote students. So the first one with that is making a Zoom appointment. So you would schedule an appointment with a tutor and it'll be 30 minutes long for a reserved time. And you'll just share your screen with the tutor to look over your work that you're working on. Maybe it's a paper or maybe you wanna go over some assignment instructions and you'll get that one-on-one -on -one feedback. The other virtual option is an email submission. So with this one, you would wanna submit your work to the Writing Center as a Word document and some extra information just to tell the tutors a little bit about what your assignment's about, um, what you're looking for help with, and then your university ID and the course code for the class. So the way this works is we'll read through your paper and we will leave feedbacks in the margin using the comment feature in Word. And then we will email that paper right back to you and we can also email it back with a receipt. Um, normally our time response is 48 hours on this. That does exclude weekends. And during high volume periods, like midterms and finals, we get a lot of papers. So that does get extended up to 72 hours during that time period. So you might want to submit a little early if that's the case. And then our final option here is an in-person appointment. So this is my favorite. I love getting to sit down to students and really connect and talk about what they're wanting to look for help with. So much like the Zoom appointment, you will schedule this in advance. It's going to be 30 minutes long and you can share a copy of your work with the tutor. We can sit down and look at it on the computer together. And again, you're just going to kind of explain the assignment information, what you're looking for help with and um, any specific areas you're concerned about with the tutor. So the process of making an appointment. So you do have to make an appointment for the Zoom and the in-person appointments. So you'll make that through EAB Navigate. So if you just search EAB on the Tarleton website, you can log in with your UID and your NTNet password. This is the same information you use to log into Canvas. And then I'll bring up a student page and you'll click, select, you'll click schedule an appointment and then you'll just choose tutoring. And then it'll ask you what you're looking for help with. That's that list we looked at earlier on the right. And then it'll ask you where you want the appointment to be. And that's when you choose whether you want it to be in person or remote. So we hope that y'all come and see us. Our goal is really to help students hone their skill and writing throughout their time here at Tarleton. And just to make sure that students feel a little bit better about their assignment um, when they leave than when they came in. So right here, this is our phone number. Feel free to call us with any questions. This is our email address. That's what you'll wanna send your email paper to. 
And then this is our physical location on the Stephenville campus. We'd love to have y'all drop by, come see us. We promise we can help and we look forward to working with y'all. Thank you, Haley. Next, we will hear from the Office of the Registrar. Hi, my name is Alex. I'm with the Registrar's Office. Uh, first, I wanted to talk about, uh, in this meeting, we're gonna talk about how to register for classes, the difference between a drop and a withdraw, uh, how to order transcripts and other resources our department might offer. So first is registering for classes. We use Schedule Planner. Uh, you can find this in your gateway account after logging in. Um, when you log into your schedule planner, you can filter by campus, uh, search for available courses. You can add in personal breaks like um, a work schedule that you may need to work around. Um, the, there's a video that we're going to show you that walks you through this process. Um, and you can also use this resource to add or drop classes before the semester starts as well instead of completing a drop form. Hey Texans, with registration just around the corner, it's important that you have the tools you need to be successful here at Tarleton. Today, we're gonna to talk about the schedule planner. First, you're gonna to go to the Tarleton website and click log in and then click My Gateway. Log into your My Gateway account with your UID and password. Once you log into your My Gateway account, you're gonna scroll down on the home page and select Duck Tracks under Student Links. From here, you will select Online Services and Financial Aid. Then click Registration. Now you can click on Schedule Planner. Make sure you've selected the correct term you want to register for and hit Submit. When you get to the Schedule Planner landing page, select Open Classes Only Filter. You may also want to filter out the course links. Again, make sure you've selected the right term. And if you're in the Stephenville campus, select Stephenville. Once you've applied your filters, select Add Course. In this example, we'll add English 1301 by typing in the English subject and selecting 1301 from the drop down menu. If you have selected that course, you're going to want to click on Options. And you're going to unselect all of these classes. And then you're going to reselect the section where it says HN2. If you want, you can click on the blue icon and it'll give you a little bit of information about the course. You want to make sure that it says honors. Then you're going to save and close. And now you can generate your schedule. Once you've selected the courses you'd like to take, at the bottom select generate schedules. From here, we can see several schedule options that we can view from. If you'd like to lock in a certain class section, simply click the padlock next to the course. This will likely generate new schedule options for you to pick from. Let's say you need to schedule around practice or work schedule. Under add break, type in work schedule, and select the times and days that this will be impacted. Then select Add Break. Once you're back on the landing page, select Generate Schedules. Now you can see the work schedule is marking days and times off of your calendar so courses won't be scheduled during that time. Once you've decided on a schedule, select Add to Shopping Cart and click Continue. 
If you wish to register for these courses, you'll then be taken back to Duck Tracks where you can officially register for your courses. Thank you for watching. We hope this tutorial on using Schedule Planner will help you get registered for another great semester here at Tarleton. Okay, that you can also find that video on YouTube if you ever needed to refer back to it. Next, we're moving on to drop versus withdraw. So dropping a class, um, you're able to drop as many classes as you want as long as you stayed enrolled in at least one of them. If you need to drop all of them and drop to zero hours, that would be considered a withdrawal. You can withdraw from the summer semester and stay enrolled in the fall semester if you choose. But if you withdraw from the fall semester, you would need to reapply for spring. Those long semesters work a little differently. You can order transcripts through the registrar's office. This function is available on our website. So you would go to the registrar's page and then there should be a blue or a purple link for ordering transcripts and you would click this uh, transcript services system. You can order online, placing an order online. There's a $2.40 processing fee or you can pick up a transcript in person or have it mailed. Other resources on our page. Um, you can find graduation information, uh, transcripts, uh, and grade information as well. You can contact our office. Um, there's the website and the phone number at the bottom as well. Thank you, Alex. And at this time, we will hear from the University Bookstore. Good afternoon. My name is Cliff Hoy and I'm manager of the Texans Campus Store and we are located in the Thompson Student Center on the Stephenville campus. And yes, we are the University Bookstore, but we have a lot of other things available too. We carry lots of merchandise and everything we carry is available uh, online at texanscampusbookstore.carlton.edu. We have regards on merchandise. If you get something online or you come in the store and get it and you just don't like it, you've got 30 days to return it along with your receipt. So returns are no problem. We carry lots and lots of vendors. We've got Nike, we've got Champion. We carry Columbia, Bison, Skull Candy. Life is good, and that's just to name a few. Uh, wide range of merchandise, adult, of course, children and infant clothing. We have drinkware, coolers, ties, jewelry, pet gear, and lots of other stuff. And of course, we have textbooks and course materials. Textbooks also can be ordered online, and we do offer rental books and ebooks for select courses. To order on the website, you select textbooks, order textbooks, select your term, and then the department, course number, section, instructor to receive a full list of the books you'll need for each class. We also offer a free courier service to the Fort Worth and Waco campuses twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Orders need to be placed by uh, noon on Monday and Wednesday. Textbooks can be returned within five days of the official start of classes. Copy of your receipt or if you come into, uh, into the store, we can also do it with the receipt there. We also have a textbook buyback program that we offer at the end of each semester. And you can check us out on social media or our website for the dates. We have school supplies also. We have a lot of stuff available at our Stephenville location. And we also have vending machines in the campus library at the Dick Smith Library and at the Fort Worth campus. There's a vending machine located in the break area on the second floor. We do have some electronics. The Rocketbook Panda Planner is a favorite. It's a new item and it's a favorite of everyone here in the store. Uh, we have phone chargers and cables, headphones, portable speakers, calculators such as the TI-84 and the uh, TI-36X. We have apparel and backpacks. We offer jewelry, sunglasses. We have regalia for graduates, diploma frames, and of course, the tailgating coolers, stadium seating, umbrellas, drinkware, youth and infant stuff. And we can't forget the dogs as everybody has to take care of their 
your favorite path. We offer graduation regalia uh, for both bachelor's and on the master's level. Um, all you need, you can either purchase it in store or once again, order it online on our website, texanscampusbookstore.tarleton.edu. We have the caps, gowns, tassels, stoles, and hoods, just about everything you need. We also offer a custom program where you can customize your stole right, with the Justin Stole Builder. We offer graduation regalia on the doctoral level. There are three packages currently available for purchase. The Windsor, Sussex, and Bristol, ranging from $4 to $900. There are also rentals available starting at $95. You can set up an appointment with Susan for measurements at, or purchase at 254-968-9165 or email her at sjones1 at tarleton.edu please make sure to order six weeks before graduation. Texans Campus Store, of course, located on the Stephenville campus, 1452 West Jones Street, our phone number 254-968-9007, 254-968-9263. We also have uh, social media sites on Facebook, Texans Campus Store, Instagram, Texans Campus Store, Twitter, at Texans Store, and website, once again, Texas Campus, Texans Campus Bookstore, .carleton .edu. Thank you, Cliff. Thank you. Next Thank you. up, academic technology. Hi, my name is Isaac, and we work in academic technology, and our primary focus for student support is the Canvas LMS here at, uh, at Tarleton. If you have been a high school student or graduate or undergrad student, you've probably used a learning management system. Tarleton uses the Canvas system and we provide that support. The primary things that we get asked from new students are uh, their inability to access the Canvas system. So I would like to address these things right quick and let you know what to look for and what we can help with if you run into any of these issues. If you're unable to log into Canvas, most likely, you haven't registered for a class. We only create the Canvas user accounts for students when they are actually enrolled in a class, not admitted to the university. That may change in the future, but right now that's how our process works. If you're not seeing your course in Canvas, give it a little bit of time. The process of moving data from the banner system where you're registering for classes to Canvas can take about three hours. So sometimes just giving it a little bit of time will allow for that system to transport all of your information over and you'll be able to see your classes just fine. There are some other reasons that you might not see your classes, so always give us a call if you ever have any problems with that. The other, uh, the last thing that we hear pretty regular is you can see your courses inside of Canvas, but for whatever reason you can't click on them or they're not accessible. Here at Tarleton, we allow our instructors to uh, make their courses available whenever they are ready to do so. Um, Academic technology doesn't do that for them. So if you're unable to access a course, oftentimes you'll need to reach out to the instructor and ask them to simply make the course available. Um, just to give you some examples of issues that we can help uh, resolve or, or give you a hand in, if you've submitted a document or posted on a discussion board, you wanna make sure that the instructor is able to see it. We can go in and check and make sure that it is posted properly, that it's all there, that it's not a blank page, that it's the right version. So anytime you're ever uncomfortable with a submission and you want to make absolutely sure that it's there, especially if you put a lot of work into some grad level course, uh, course assignments, give us a call. We can definitely check that out. If you do encounter an issue, I want to encourage you to make sure that you get a ticket number or case ID. Um, anytime you ever report an issue with academic technology or any other support team here at Tarleton, we will assign a ticket ID and keep notes on that ticket. If for whatever reason you attempt to submit something and you're unable to, we will have a record of what we've tried and the things that we've done in order to get that submission uh, completely submitted inside of Canvas or a recommendation for the student to email a document or a submission to the instructor. But also it'll help cover you if the instructor is resistant to accepting that. Not very many are. Uh, most of them will take your word, especially at a grad level course that if you really do have technical issues, they'll, they'll be like, okay, no problem. But you will run into a few that are pretty insistent that deadlines are important, that due dates are important. 
And uh, if you're not getting something submitted, we can help with that and we can help uh, provide a, a record for that. A side note on that, if you do submit something, you should get a receipt emailed to your uh, Tarleton email address. So keep a copy of those receipts as well. Finally, I want to touch base real quick on third-party tools. Canvas has a lot of third-party applications that instructors can elect to use, like Turnitin or McGraw-Hill, Cengage, or even the Respondus Lockdown Browser. Academic technology will support the integrations of these things, but if those products themselves don't work, we don't have any type of administrative access to them. So I want to give you a heads up if you're calling about a third-party app, we may hand you off to that uh, vendor to get support from them. All right, to reach out to us, you can simply email us at canvas at Tarleton or call us at 254-968-1960. And I want to give you a quick note on that. We have both 24-hour support and local support. If you call that number and our local support isn't available, you'll automatically be forwarded to our Canvas 24-hour support line. They can help with almost anything. So don't feel bad if you don't get a hold of us, one of us locally. But if the option's there, normal business hours, and somebody's available to answer the phone, either me or some of my team, we'll answer the phone here locally for things like login issues or registration issues and things like that. So if the menu option seems different whenever you call at different times, that's possibly a reason. Thank you so much, Isaac. Next, we will hear from Disability Resources. Hello, my name is Legina Dow. I'm the Accessibility Coordinator for Tarleton. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about just the rights and responsibilities. If you are a student that you feel you may have a disability and it's not been identified or you know you have that, um, please contact our office. Um, the biggest, um, point I'd like to make is that it takes collaboration. We need, um, we're your central contact um, point for any students with disabilities, but it is a collaborative effort between the professors and the faculty to make sure that we have everything available for you for equal access um, to the curriculum. So um, students that have disabilities, whether that be bachelor or graduate students, you register with our office and make known um, the need for accommodations. At that point, we will review your case with you and form a plan that you will collaborate with your professor um, so that your um, services allow you to have equal access to um, the curriculum. Okay. Um, the faculty, the students, um, each have responsibilities. So I just wanna to touch on those just so as a student, you know, what is the responsibility of the faculty? What is the responsibility of you as the student? So um, faculty, um, they have the right to verify um, through our office that these are the correct accommodations. They do expect the student to um, initiate the request for the accommodations in the classroom. Um, faculty members are um, responsible for evaluating students um, on their academic performance. So we, um, in, and they ensure that they're providing the reasonable accommodations. So um, what's real, our, our faculty is really, uh, really good at um, just fostering the accessible learning environment, just making sure that we have everything in place. So it's kind of all a, a level playing field for everyone. Um, they also can uh, address our office if the um, if there's any questions with the students' accommodations or any questions at all. Um, we are happy to meet with faculty and students both um, to resolve anything we need to, so that um, you have a good educational journey. Um, students' rights. Um, students do self-disclose their disability. Um, that's when they register for our office. Um, for services and um, the students responsible for providing the teacher um, the letter of accommodation. So once you get, if you're a student watching this and you've gotten an accommodation letter, it is your responsibility to make that arrangement with the professor, sit down with that professor, go over um, the accommodations that you're gonna need for, for that class and um, meet all the same requirements as all the other students um, for the essential elements of the course. Um, you have the right to expect um, that your information is always confidential. It's only shared with people who have an educational need to know. 
So we hope that you will receive all the equal access um, throughout your education. If you ever have a problem, there is an appeals process that you can go through. And on the disabilities website at Tarleton, it outlines all the steps for that if you want to look that up. And then the next thing we're going to talk about are accommodations. Just remember that accommodations are requested. They're not just automatically offered um, and they may not alter the essential nature of the course. So that's something you can discuss closely with your professor. It would vary from course to course on what might alter the um, nature of a course. And um, just remember that accommodations must be necessary for the student to have equal access. So it's not just that it's something that's beneficial to you, but it has to provide you, um, it has to be that tool that allows you as a student to have equal access to the curriculum. Okay, and then um, we'll go to the letters of accommodation. Um, the students are given the digital access once they've been approved for accommodations. Um, you must provide this to your teacher or your professor um, or anybody you're working with, even lab, um, lab uh, instructors, anyone that you feel like that's uh, involved in your class that you're going to need to utilize accommodations. Um, make sure that you've met with the faculty member and that the plan has been discussed and um, it's only shared on a need to know basis. And you're always uh, very encouraged to come to our office. We have students come in all the time. We take walk-ins um, and appointments, and we will help you in any way that we can with just about anything that you're struggling with. Um, there is a testing center, um, disabilities office. I think that's good. Okay. Um, the testing accommodation, sorry. Um, two options for the testing accommodations, um, the physical accommodations, um, and then proctoring services through the testing center. Um, the test student, it is important to know, and a lot of students don't realize this, that if you're going to use the testing center, the professor will connect you um, with how to do that in the testing center. Also, you can call them and they'll give you steps on how to register to take accommodated tests if that's allowable for you. Um, you must register 72 hours in advance or, or notify your professor 72 hours in advance of the accommodated test. So say you take an accommodated test and then you decide that you don't want to do that on the next one, you have to tell them 72 hours prior to the exams whether you are or are not going to be using the testing center and taking the test in an accommodated version. And there's the information um, to contact us. Um, like I said, we're here um, all the time, eight to five, and we answer our phone typically after hours. So um, we're very um, accommodating for our students and your success is very, very important to us. And so um, any, any questions you have, please reach out to our office. Thank you so much, Legina. And our last department for today is Student Counseling Center. Hello, I'm JD, they, them pronouns, and I'm Associate Director for Student Counseling Services uh, based out of Fort Worth here. Um, so yeah, what we do, we provide mental health services to you. So uh, mental health counseling or personal counseling um, that can have a few different formats here. We do individual, we also do group. Um, and then we also have some non-clinical services that we offer. So a bunch of workshops, including mental health first aid. So I teach a lot of those. So that's official mental health first aid certification. So a nice resume booster. Um, also helpful for any of you who happen to be working on becoming a teacher. Um, and we have some other outreach and prevention services. Uh, we are the first in the a and system to have survivor advocates. So those are professionals that will help guide people who are survivors of um, of a crime such as domestic violence, harassment, stalking, uh, sexual assault. And so these are people who are specifically trained to help guide people through the process of um, uh, recovering from that and figuring out what they want to do regarding reporting, etc. Uh, we also have some walk-in crisis services and our number uh, acts as an after-hours crisis line. Um, this is different from emergency services. So in the case of your life being in danger, go ahead and skip over us and call 911. 
Uh, but when something big happens and we need someone uh, to talk with as soon as possible, um, yeah, we have those walk-in uh, services available. So why counseling? Uh, we are professional, so we have licensed staff clinicians um, at the LPC, LCSW, and LMSW level, um, and we have professional interns. And so these are people who are working under a licensed clinician. Um, uh, they are currently working on their licensing. Uh, we are confidential, so uh, your records are protected by HIPAA. They don't go to family members, they don't go to teachers, they don't go to uh, other academic institutions um, if you happen to go to another university. Um, also, we are exempt from Clery Act reporting, so uh, like especially our survivor advocates. Um, uh, most university professionals, when we hear about a uh, a crime that has been committed, we're required to report that. Uh, those of us who are counselors are exempt from that. So that way it is, uh, the power remains yours to determine whether or not you would like to make a report. And then we can help guide you through making that, uh, making those decisions. We don't go through insurance. And so one wonderful advantage to that is that no diagnosis is required. Uh, we do a lot of preventative work too. So you don't necessarily have to wait until uh, you reach the point of a diagnosable concern in order to seek out services through student counseling services. And our services here are basically free, that you've actually already paid for them through your student health fees. So the kinds of things that you might talk about uh, really range. So we have here, it could just be life adjustment and stress. Um, uh, to relationships to uh, some of the more diagnosable concerns, depression, anxiety, trauma, um, obsessive compulsive disorder, bipolar, etc. Um, uh, and yeah, I also have on here minority stress. So it's really all the different things that might impact your mental and emotional well-being um, are potential things that you could uh, seek out services uh, uh, with student counseling services. So what does that look like? Uh, so once you make the appointment, uh, you would most likely be scheduled for an intake session. Um, and during that, you're completing the required paperwork. And really, that one's built around having a good conversation with someone to explore what it is your specific needs are going to be, figure out what goals to work on, um, and then also connect you with other resources, like some of the departments that you've already gotten to talk with. How often we meet really depends on what your specific needs are. So at this point, the majority of our clients uh, meet every other week. That seems to help out a lot of people with that academic life balance. Some people, they're really focused on specific um, problems or goals that might be covered in just a single session. Um, some, they're going to work really intensely on a particular uh, goal and meet weekly um, for maybe a shorter period of time. And then some people, they just want to have like maybe more of a monthly check-in. So we really try to customize these services to you. We have a soft limit of about eight sessions per semester, which sounds like it's not a lot. But remember, our semesters are 16 weeks long. Um, so those that do every other week, that actually covers the entire semester. Uh, we get confused with a lot of other departments. So um, the most common one is academic advising. There are a lot of universities and, and colleges where, uh, where mental health counseling or personal counseling and academic counseling are merged. We at, at Tarleton, we, we have those separate. Um, so different department is academic advising. We got to hear from some of these others, uh, which are wonderful resources that we send people on over to. I do wanna highlight that Student Counseling Services is not in charge of um, letters to support emotional support animals or service animals. Um, that's just not a, a that's just not a service that we provide. Um, uh, there's a separate department that handles some limited psychiatric medication, uh, so pretty much straightforward anxiety and depression medications. More complicated than that uh, will probably mean referral to a provider out in the community. 
We're also not a hospital, so we don't have any inpatient services. Um, so not going to be staying at student counseling services overnight or any sort of like in like in-house treatment that way. Um, that also means that we don't provide specialty care for uh, things like severe eating disorders, which would normally require a doctor, maybe a nutritionist, to really monitor the organic side of the concerns there. But we do help out um, auxiliary to that, to so someone who is recovering from um, uh, an eating disorder, um, is receiving the proper treatment elsewhere, we can help support that with student counseling services. And all that can be sorted out um, through that intake session. Where are we? So we have two places that you can go to in person. So Stephenville, that's the Wellness Center in Traditions North, right next to the Rec Center. Um, in Fort Worth, we're in the currently um, the the main building, but we do have a private entrance on the northwest side. So I always tell people, look for the flagpoles, and we have a private entrance right there. Um, we're also online. Um, so yeah, we use uh, secure video calls to keep everything super private, etc. cetera. Um, not every case is going to be appropriate for online, um, but again, we can sort that out during that intake session. Um, there is a counseling center in Waco. It is technically not run by our department. So that one is run as a collaboration between the Clinton Community College and uh, the counseling department, as in the academic department. Um, so technically not us. Uh, there's still great services. Um, and then Waco students are still eligible for our online services. how to contact us. So if you want to make an appointment, best way is to show up either in person or give us a call, Stephenville Campus, 254-968-9044. That should be on the back of your student ID card. And remember that also acts as an after hours crisis line. Uh, if you're trying to reach specifically Fort Worth, we have our separate number there. Um, these numbers are linked, so after hours, um, our number gets forwarded over to the Stephenville campus anyway. Um, so if you are looking for just one number to remember, um, look on the back of your student ID card. Yeah. Our website is right there, slash counseling. Um, do note, if you're looking for the academic department, that's counsel. We are counseling. Um, uh, uh, there is our email address if you want to contact us about workshops, etc. That email address is not a good way to try to schedule an appointment. So that's if you want to figure out more about mental health first aid training, or um, we're going to be launching some resiliency uh, workshops, some life skills workshops to really help out people um, uh, before they even need uh, individual or group counseling. And then you can find us on social media. Search for Tarleton Wellness, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. A cool feature I wanted to highlight here to close out my section um, it is right there on our website on the front page. If you scroll down a bit, you can find a take a screening button. So this is if you're not sure about whether or not you want to engage in counseling yet. Maybe you just want to explore some of your own symptoms first. Go ahead and take a screening. Um, you'll also see on uh, that front page uh, a little calendar. Right now it's blank. I'm still building our calendar, but you'll see a bunch of workshops that you could potentially drop into um, uh, starting in the fall. Um, here is what uh, the screening page looks like. So it'll take you to another website um, that is, again, confidential. Um, where you can really explore a really wide range of concerns. Um, so some of these get really specific here, alcohol use, gambling, um, generalized anxiety, etc. But towards the bottom, there's well-being screen and a wide range. So that's just if you know you're just not feeling all that great or just want a general checkup, those are great screenings to take. And you can take them as often as you want. Um, some people call this just a little uh, checkup from the head up. <laughs> Um, this is not diagnostic. So, um, for instance, the bipolar screen, it might indicate that, um, uh, that your situation uh, aligns pretty well with bipolar, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have bipolar disorder. Uh, so again, it's just a screening. 
uh, that might help you to understand yourself a little bit better or come to that first intake session with a little bit more information to talk about. Very good. Thank you so much, James. All right, everyone, we've come to the time in our presentation where we are open for questions. You should see an interact button in the lower hand, uh, right hand corner of your screen. So certainly feel free to use that button to submit your questions for any of our presenters today. And uh, while we're waiting for those to come in, I did want to uh, mention the contact information for the College of Graduate Studies. We've got lots of great resources for you available on our website. And of course, our office phone number is there. We've got a dedicated email address for receiving your application related materials. And then for general questions, feel free to reach out to us at gradinfo at tarleton.edu. As a reminder, this presentation will be available to view on demand in our Graduate Studies Presentation Library. And so feel free to revisit it as often as you need to. I know there was a lot of information presented here today. And uh, we've also got lots of other great content in the library, information on funding your graduate degree, uh, virtual grad student panel presentations, uh, in addition to a host of program specific content. Uh, and I see that we do have one question from the audience. So um, this person is asking if I'm an online student for fall of 22, where would I get a student ID? So we do have a, a dedicated student ID office uh, that handles all of that. And so once you, um, once it's time to, to report for classes, they can work with you to get that done. Uh, it's the Texan Card Office, and you can search for that via our uh, institutional website, which is tarleton.edu. Just put Texan Card Office into that search box, and it'll take you to the appropriate information. All right, not seeing any other questions. Uh, we will end this webcast. I thank all of our presenters so much for the invaluable information you presented to us today. And uh, we thank everyone for watching, whether you are in our live audience or on demand. I uh, hope you'll have a great rest of your day.